The show begins with Roy, a retired Delta Force soldier, who wakes up to a henchman trying to kill him with a machete. Roy seems to be skillfully able to disarm the assassin, but in reality, he is reliving the same day over a hundred times, so he knows exactly where the henchman is going to pull the machete. Roy has been stuck in a time loop, and has learned the day's pattern through many previous attempts of reliving his day. He wakes up each day in a loop, and faces a constant stream of assassins across the city, who try to kill him for some reason. Each time Roy dies, he ends up back in his apartment on the next loop. Each loop begins every morning at 7 a.m., when Roy faces the same henchman with the machete. After skillfully eliminating the machete-wielding guy, Roy finds a gunman in a helicopter outside his window, but he manages to dodge the bullets, because he has lived the same day over a hundredth time. Roy kills the gunner with a knife, causing the helicopter to crash into his apartment. However, Roy manages to jump out the window onto a truck, before the helicopter explodes. After escaping the attack, he hijacks a vehicle from a citizen, and drives through the streets. Suddenly, a pair of female assassins starts chasing him, because they are also determined to kill him for some reason. Roy is familiar with his day's patterns, so he easily tries to escape their attack, but mistakenly gets killed, and ends up in a new loop. He wakes up once more, and follows the same sequence of events. Additionally during each loop, Roy also faces a dwarf guy, Kaboom, who uses a bomb to kill him, a young Chinese girl, Guan Yin, who is a skillful sword fighter, and yells her name dramatically after killing Roy each time. During these never-ending time loops, Roy also comes across a man with a similar face to him, whom he labels as Roy number two. After completely learning his daily patterns, he is sometimes luckily able to kill some of the assassins, but still hasn't been able to survive long enough to figure out the unsolvable mystery behind these time loops. Each of his loops ends exactly at 12.47 p.m. with a final attack, forcing him to wake up back in his apartment on the next loop. After facing the same day for over 140 times, Roy starts to believe that his ex-wife, Gemma, is somehow connected to his time loop drama, so he gives her a call in her office during one of his loops. The call is received by her boss, Venter, who surprisingly informs him that Gemma died in an accident. However, before Roy could get more details about her accident, he is killed by the assassins once more, and ends up back in a new loop. Following the same sequence of attacks, he once more hijacks the same vehicle, and is chased by the same pair of assassins. This time, he skillfully drives off through the streets, and leads them to an abandoned place. He then uses a rocket launcher to kill them, giving him some time to think about his death loop mystery. He visits a nearby bar, and orders a large bottle of drink, but it's not the first time he is doing this, since he has already followed this sequence of event in his previous time loops. Dave, who is a security specialist, also joins him in the bar, and starts talking sarcastically about some unnecessary stuff, which bothers Roy because he is already aware of his speech. At 11.05 a.m., a Chinese sword fighter, Dai Feng, enters the bar, and takes the last remaining seat. Roy then starts talking to Dave about his previous dying patterns, and explains how it feels to face a bullet in your face. Dave starts laughing at him, because he thinks Roy is just high enough, and joking around. At exactly 12.47 p.m., the assassins trace him in the bar and kill him, which is the maximum time he has ever faced in a loop, and has never lived past 12.47 p.m. He dies in the middle of the bar, but the reason of his death still remains a mystery to him. The scene changes to a flashback, which takes us to a day before his endless time loop started. He visits his ex-wife Gemma at Dino Labs, under the pretense of a job interview. The two argue over their son, Joe, whom Gemma has led to believe that Roy is just a family friend. Roy and Gemma have some personal conversations, while her boss Venter is listening and watching them through a security camera. Roy asks her about the project she is working on, to which she explains that she has created a spindle device for Venter, which allows user to travel in time and change the past, but it can also destroy the planet if used improperly. Gemma soon starts acting suspiciously, dropping hints and insisting Roy to open the birthday present she sent him. She also obtains a sample of Roy's hair, and keeps it safe for some reason. Since Venter doesn't want Roy near Gemma's highly classified project, he sends the head of security, Brett, to interrupt them and escort him out. 
Before they could force him out, Gemma gives him a hug and whispers the word, Osiris, in his ear. When Roy leaves the lab, Venter orders Brett to hire some eccentric killers and keep track of Roy. He further orders him to assassinate Roy if he becomes problematic in any means. Later at night, Roy meets a female dentist at a bar and has a date with her as a one-night stand. In the meantime, Gemma uses Roy's hair sample which she had obtained earlier and places them inside the device she has been working on. She then calls Roy while he is sitting in that bar and informs him that she is about to do something drastic. However, Venter is listening through a cross line and cuts the call before she could reveal anything to Roy. She then picks up that device and apparently runs away, leaving the mystery for the moment. Roy goes to his apartment with his date, in spite of trying to reach Gemma for a call. This is probably the last night before his time loop started, which somehow shows a connection to Gemma's project. The flashback ends, and Roy wakes up in his 141st loop. He finally remembers the birthday present from Gemma, and opens the package to reveal a book called Iset and Osiris. It takes a couple of more kills for him to successfully read the book, due to trying to read the book at inopportune times. He then goes to underground Atlanta, where he buys some time to read the book. He read some phrases while going through the pages, but the book doesn't make any sense to him for the moment. Suddenly, he spots his son Joe in the same underground, who doesn't yet know Roy is his father. Roy follows him to a retro video game convention, and meets him while he is playing a vintage game. Roy spends some time with him, but doesn't mention Gemma's death. Shortly after, Roy realizes this is his first time surviving the day past 12.47 p.m. This is Roy's second big clue, as it lets him know the killers couldn't find him because he was underground, meaning he has some kind of electronic tracker on his body. Outside underground Atlanta, the killers track him down and execute him, as he protects Joe with his body. This time, Roy wakes up in the new loop, and asks the machete-wielding men about the tracker in his body, but he doesn't reveal anything. He then visits the same bar, and undresses him inside the restroom, but he is still unable to find any tracker. He then talks to the annoying security consultant Dave, and asks him some details about body trackers, to which he suggests a hint about a tracker in his teeth. Roy remembers the female dentist from his date the night before, and realizes that she was working for Venter, and planted the tracker in his body. He goes to the restroom with Dave, and starts pulling his teeth out one by one, until he finds the tracker. However, Roy number two suddenly finds him, and kills him. In the next loop, he wastes no time in pulling out the tracker, and hides it in an abandoned place. As one of the assassins follows the tracker, Roy confronts her with a gun, and asks her about who sent her, but she doesn't reveal anything, and gets killed. He then uses the same tactics, and manages to kill all other assassins. He calls Brett on his cell phone, and threatens him that he is coming for him. He uses the same hijacked vehicle, and tries to break through the front door of Dino Lab, but Brett kills him and ends the loop. He uses a different strategy, by distracting the security toward an empty vehicle, but still gets killed. He then disguises himself as Roy number 2, and bypasses the security protocols. After multiple failed attempts, he finally manages to enter the facility, but comes across Guan Yin. It takes a couple of more kills for him to fight Guan Yin, but she always kills him. At one point, Roy is able to get so far enough to confront Venter, who admits that he cased Gemma's death, and claims that he will use the Osiris spindle device to remate time as he sees fit. Venter wants to use the spindle for his own agenda, by erasing some of history's most horrible events, and setting himself up as the world's dictator. He uses that sword and kills Roy, believing that he will never return. However, what Venter didn't know was that Gemma already started the Osiris spindle, and placed Roy in a time loop by using the hair sample. So he uses this opportunity in his wealth of days, and visits the bar to meet Dai Feng, the Chinese sword fighter. With the assistance of Dai Feng, he gets some training and becomes an expert in sword fighting. He once more enters the facility, and challenges Guan Yin for a sword fight. He eventually kills her, and also stabs Brett in the forehead with that sword. Venter is now aware of the time loop, but warns him that if the spindle reaction is maintained too long, it'll destroy the world. Roy kills Venter, but is unaware that assassins were also sent after his son Joe. 
Roy rushes to save Joe, but arrives too late and finds his son murdered. Roy goes wild, and it turns out that Venter was telling the truth, as an energy wave encompasses the entire city, destroying the planet. Roy wakes up once more, as it's just another day for him in a new loop. At this point, Roy loses the will to go on. He wakes up every morning to the machete and lets it fall, simply accepting his murder. Finally, he resolves that he'll live his endless days with his son. He follows him once more in the underground Atlanta, and decides to play vintage games with him. They spend some time playing inside the retro game convention, where Roy wishes to bring his old life back, because Joe reminds him of Gemma, and he feels heartbroken. They sit on a park bench after gaming, where the loop ends as the world ends. Roy spends many attempts with Joe, usually ending them on the same park bench just as the world ends. On one such loop, he learns that Gemma called Joe that morning, which means she can't have died when Venter said she did. He demands Joe's cell phone, and discovers that she was always alive when his loop started each day. He once more uses his tactics in the next loop, and kills every assassin on his way through the lab. He confronts Venter once more, and asks him about Gemma, only to find her dead. They further reveal that Gemma sabotaged the Osiris spindle using Roy's hair sample, which started a chain reaction, and cannot be stopped. With the help of security footage, Roy learns that he has only 14 minutes in each loop to save Gemma. He kills Venter and Brett, and also shoots himself to start a new loop. Roy starts the new loop with confidence, thanks to his previous experience, and takes the helicopter under control. With the minigun, and a whole lot of vengeance, Roy confronts all the assassins at once inside the facility, and kills them all. He uses his previous learned patterns, and manages to kill other armed guards as well. As Brett is about to kill Gemma, Roy intervenes just in time, and kills Brett and Venter, just before they could murder her. Gemma is concerned about Joe's safety too, but Roy convinces her that he killed all the assassins, and Joe is safe. They have a brief moment, in which he claims that Joe loves her so much. After that, Gemma admits that she purposely set him on a time loop, so he could figure out what to do, and that the only way to stop the Osiris spindle from destroying the world, is for him to enter the machine's core. Entering the core not only stops the spindle from overloading, but it pulls Roy out of the loop. However, the problem is he has to relive the day one more time. Additionally, if he dies in the final loop, without any do-overs, he dies for good in reality. Roy still follows the process, and says a final emotional goodbye to Gemma, in case he doesn't return. He enters the machine's core, but the question whether he survived the final day or not, is completely left in the air, and the movie closes with an ambiguous ending.